waiting for a man who says he's going to blow the lid off the secrets of the religion of the stars to tell the story of the dark side of the Church of Scientology. Hi there, everyone. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for tuning in. It's Saturday afternoon, and we're doing a live Q&A with Mark and Claire Headley. Uh, but one housekeeping matter I wanted to take up before we begin. You can see right over there the lovely blue light that is illuminating the Emmy Award. Uh, thank you to a wonderful viewer who sent me a link to a spotlight and sent me uh, a... Uh, uh, a small donation to cover that so I could order it. And I have now put it up there and it looks really cool. So now we're going to add Mark and Claire and let's see what I need to do to accomplish that. I have to go like this and there they are. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Okay. We already have a bunch of people in that have been waiting patiently. Uh, let's just see. Manchester, UK in the house. Uh, Trevenon in the Netherlands. Scotland. No. Nope. Middle of the Pacific. Guess that's uh, probably Hawaii. Scotland. New Mexico. Wow, there's people in here from all over. Yeah, awesome. Cambodia. Southwest Missouri, no org. <laughs> Along nice. with the entirety of the rest of the Midwest. Yeah, Yay. it's very desolate in there. <laughs> there's more superchargers in the middle of the United States than there are Scientology orgs. Uh, Hello from Denmark. Oh, there's people from all over the place. Hi from Vancouver org. <laughs> oh, we have someone from Ireland. Oh, really? I, I can't keep up with all of these, Claire. I'm like, hi from Serbia. Thanks nice. for doing this at Europe-friendly time. Very welcome. Uh, I have, uh, both Claire and I have uh, an affinity for people outside of the United States. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so do I. Well, yeah. But I married one. <laughs> <laughs> How much more affinity could I have? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let, let's start off with the uh, first question here. G.E. Anderson, and I saw that, that G.E. Anderson is actually in Maui. Uh, can you enlighten us on how Scientology entangles new members? What are they told and how are they handled by staff? Are staff compensated per recruit? Well, how they entangle new members. I'm not sure if you're asking about new staff or new members. There's like a, there's a distinction between those two. Uh, new members are just new people that pay for Scientology services, and the compensation for the staff is theoretically in their pay that they get when the people pay for services. New staff members are not like compensated for you don't get a uh, a payoff for signing up a new staff member um how do they get entangled hmm. usually through some free uh test or an e-meter demonstration or a free film or something that is the people that are outside of second generation Scientologists. Yeah. Because the vast majority of new people coming into Scientology these days are children of existing Scientologists, not um, new raw people off the street. Uh, anybody that's got access to Google, Scientology is pretty much dead in the water when it comes to that. They, they do have that thing where um, they have a, 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 this test they have people sign out called the the OCA, the Oxford Capacity Analysis Test. And from that test, they do do a good job of sort of isolating a person's own insecurities or things they think is wrong with themselves. And then Scientology uses that to then say, oh, it looks like from your test that you have a, a you're, you're not really good at relationships and we have a course on how to get you 
uh, to fix your relationships. And they have that for pretty much anything that you could identify as something that you don't you don't feel good about that you're 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 doing. Kind right. Of and that Oxford capacity analysis has absolutely nothing to do with Oxford. Yeah. It was something that was invented by this guy called Ray Kemp in Orange County. Hubbard asked him to make this make up this test. He was a Scientologist. He was one, uh, like one of the original Scientologists in the Los Angeles area. He asked him to make up this test as a way of of um, finding things that you could tell people were wrong with them and then tell them that Scientology will solve that. Yeah. And that is basically what the OCA test is. Yeah. Hey, you know, I just realized Aaron is in the chat. Do we want do, will he will he come in? Do you want to invite him in here? Do you want to get him to come in? I don't know. Does he want to come in? Let well, if you send, send him, him the invite and he, and, he, and he accepts it, then he can come in. And if he doesn't, then we know he doesn't. Then, nice. then we SPTV will. SPTV talk show. Yeah, then we SPTV. Will <laughs> <laughs> we, Abandon oh, him. By the way, while Mike is getting that sorted out, if, if anybody wants to do an SPTV logo for us, if it's good and we all like it, I think we'll all use it. I think Clara, that and Clara is in the house too. I didn't get to oh. email her about that yet. Oh yeah, so. Clara could do it. Uh, is it Clara or Clara? I'm not sure. Anyway, it should You're say expecting someone to answer that. It should say <laughs> S P T V. Well, yeah, they will answer in the in the chats. Whenever how? I ask questions, it gets in, answered. But how England, do you answer? How in to England, pronounce England, it's you Clara. And they can, so probably here it's probably Clara. Or, yeah, they can Australia, spell it out. It's Clara. Clara. <laughs> um, the thing I was going to say is that um, it should say SPTV Network because we're all part of the SPTV Network. Um, so yeah, okay. we should uh, we should get that, and we are going to put um, SPTV merch in the, uh, SP shop on the relaunch of all the new merch that we have coming. We have all kinds of good stuff. We got some amazing samples. Oh, he, Aaron so says good. he's not near his computer, unfortunately. Okay. okay no so problem. I just wanted, I didn't want to be. Well, I sent him the invite, so, okay. you know, he it's can awesome. snub us all he wants. But we're just going to do <laughs> Q&A today, right? We're not going to, yeah. we don't have yeah, an yeah, yeah, yeah. agenda. We we're have, just going to answer questions. Some and, other thing. Perfect. It's just an opportunity for people to ask questions because, in different like, time zones like that we're never questions. live. Yep. We're okay, not usually so live for. Clearwater Chad, 81 degrees and sunny in Clearwater, Florida. Yes, nice. sir. It yeah. sure is. <laughs> Clearwater Chad, keeping us updated on the Clearwater weather from somewhere else. Exactly. He's not in but Clearwater. He's, he's in Buffalo <laughs> yes. watching the snow. Yes. <laughs> Googling oh. what the weather is in Clearwater so he can relay it to us. Oh, wait. There's another one from him. Let me just get this because <laughs> this one's very cool. Mike looks 25 years old nowadays. <laughs> now, uh, here is another thing. It's from he hanging out with Buffalo, all our 50 year olds. He needs to go have his eyes checked. <laughs> yeah. Clearwater <laughs> chat is. We're going to have to call him to blind Brad after this. <laughs> uh, oh, Mark Fisher. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hi. Happy Saturday. Have you ever thought what you would say to DM if you saw him again, if by yourselves? I have. What would it be? Um, We had this you know, question not, on one of the yeah, last chats. Yeah, I know. We had, this, we had this question before, and I can't even remember how I answered it. I can't either. You guys go go ahead. I'll I would say, say I would yeah, say, yeah, you go, honey. Sucks to suck. <laughs> I'd say, I'm done with you. Go go see your, go enjoy your cell. <laughs> I have no space uh, in my life for evil people. Well, Mark, you know what I, I would probably say to him is, uh, why don't you grow some balls and get out and confront the world and start interacting with people and and deal with what's really going on in Scientology instead of hiding in your office, sneaking around trying to avoid process service. W yeah. What's wrong with you, 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 right. you coward? Right. You know, that's a great point, Mike. Scientology purports to like uh 
makes someone uh, that gives somebody the ability to confront and shatter suppression. And Dave Miscavige uh, embodies none of that in anything he says or does. Exactly. <laughs> you yeah. never can find the guy. He's always in hiding, sort of like how Hubbard ended up at the end. Oh, very and, like how Hubbard ended up at the and end. And you're like, come on, guys. You're, you're, it's going the same way it went with Hubbard, with Miscavige, almost identically. They're getting lawsuits. They're getting uh, law enforcement starting to kind of come after them here and there. And the leader is off hiding somewhere. Right. Yeah. Okay. History repeats itself. Abe Froman, why does no one challenge TC about his abuses? Um, because, partly because he now insists that if any media is going to interview him, that they not bring up Scientology. Yeah, and it's and over has, the second they do. And has a, a blacklist of reporters who are not allowed to interview him. Right. Yep. So... The, and there is a video, I don't know uh, if Claire can find it, maybe she can send it to you, Mike, and you can put it in the description, but there is a video, I think it was an Australian reporter, or a British, that started asking him stuff about Scientology, and Tom Cruise just lit him up in the middle of the interview. Like, yep. you're being you're being disrespectful, you know? Yep. Okay, and my favorite name of everybody that comments here. <laughs> yes. Lydia Von Stretchclaw. Hi, all. Like, please don't self censure the blah, blah, blah. We love it. Own it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> all righty. Catherine, good morning from Seattle. Good nice. morning. Good morning, Catherine. Okay. Are you starring all these super chats, Claire? Yes, I am. Oh, wow. Okay, good. Dan, thank you all for fighting this cult. You're very welcome. Thank you for being here, Dan. Yeah, thanks, Dan. We appreciate it. Linda. Hello, all. Mike, what is the end game for the twerp? He's not grooming a successor, so burn it to the ground and float off with the dollars? Probably, although <clears throat> floating off with the dollars has never really been a part of the of the equation in my view. I know a lot of people think that David Miscavige is stashing away dollars. I don't believe that. I, you know, he has accumulated an amount of money um, because he gets paid more than all the other Sea Org members combined probably, but it's not in the hundreds of millions of dollars. He may have, you know, I, I, I actually, I don't know what he has. I knew what he had at one point, but, the thing that David Miscavige covets is not the money, it is the power. The power gives him all the money he needs. He doesn't need personal money. He can snap his fingers and have, you know, a new pair of John Lobb shoes ordered or someone to clip his fingernails or uh, a masseuse or a jet. Whatever he wants, he's got. And so... Burning down the organization is self-defeating for him. He is going to hang on to things until his last dying breath because that is where his, his power comes from. That's where his ability to control people comes from. And, you know, I, I don't see him taking off into the, into the sunset somewhere. Even if he were to be indicted or you know threatened with criminal prosecution or something he would just go to a scientology organization place like the free winds outside of the scope of whatever that law enforcement agency was that was seeking to go after him yeah what do you guys think you have a different view than that uh, no i think that's pretty accurate i don't think uh you know, I don't think he's going to go off and move into the middle of Alaska or anything like that. I think he would just, if that dude puts on a baseball cap and uh, walks around, someone's just going to think he's uh, part of some local little league team. They're not going to think he's the leader of a, a you know, th a billion dollar cult. They're not even going <laughs> to notice him walking around. They're just going to think he's just getting a new mitt or something for his, uh, for his, his next game team. or something, you know? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
Okay, Jamie Dodger. Mike, what would you do if you ever... Well, we just answered what we'd do if we came face-to-face with Grumpy the Dwarf. <laughs> Grumpy. <laughs> you know, Aaron, Aaron has really started a, a trend on YouTube of uh, calling him the Keebler King, the... I know. Uh, the Grumpy Dwarf, Sar- South, South Pole Elf. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brett Grace, just imagine when you guys do a live in-person SPTV event, especially if with Leah, so many more people are going to turn up to that than would any Scientology event these day- nowadays, humiliating for Mr. Mickey Witz. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Someone made that point the other night when we were talking. It was like, yeah, yeah we-, we, we have more people currently watching this, and I don't even know where to look for that number. Where yes, is we that have 11, 1127 right now, which while we're on that topic, don't forget to like this video, folks. Thank you. Oh, I see. 1135. I get it. Yep. I see where it is, Claire. Uh, okay. Anyway, 1135 people. He he can't cram that many into the flag auditorium. And that is these days the only place where he does events. Yeah. Because... He won't even go and venture out three miles down the road to the Ruth Eckerd Hall, which nope. was the other venue that was used in Clearwater all the time. And it's it's like the the incredible shrinking world of Scientology. Yeah. Well, even Ruth Eckerd Hall, when we were doing events, Mike, back in yeah. the um, in the 90s and the early 2000s, we could barely, <laughs> barely fit the uh like fill the ruth eckerd hall it was it was always a flap that we hadn't filled it and right. we would get all of the staff from any of the miami uh tampa anywhere near uh clearwater near tampa would have to come to that and sometimes they try to get other organizations from like East US, other orgs in the East Coast to come to the event. Oh yeah, Atlanta, like for the 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 LRH birthday event, which was traditionally the March 13th L. Ron Hubbard birthday, which was always held at Ruth Eckerd Hall. Yeah. People from would come from Atlanta, Orlando, Miami, uh, even as far away as New York, because that's where the, the central Scientology facility is for the Eastern United States. It was it was like you got to round them up because we have to have every seat filled. They never yeah. managed to accomplish that at the shrine. We never got that. We never got the shrine auditorium filled. Oh that no, sixty five hundred, and it yeah. was never filled. Do you know how many? I thought Ruth Eckerd Hall was not that much. It was like two, three, twenty three hundred. 20, yeah, so 2,300 is is not that much more than the Flag Auditorium. I think the Flag Auditorium, if they just jam them in there, can do a little over 1,000 or something like that. Yeah, maybe maybe a little over 1,000. Yeah. Well, that's and, it's unfortunate because according to Corinne Powell and Scientology, they have 15,000 Scientologists in the Tampa Bay area. Yeah. Guess which they is, just can't get them to show up. Which is wholly <laughs> overestimated. <laughs> Uh, 13, think- 13,000 are in ethics, so they're not allowed <laughs> yeah. to go to the event. 13, <laughs> in ethics, that's code for not in Scientology anymore. Yeah, <laughs> uh, okay. yeah you, oh, that was yeah. another thing I was going to say, Mike, is in the 90s, it, it is possible that in the late 80s and the 90s, there might have been maybe 100,000 Scientologists in the world. Yeah. Maybe. And so if you think about it, people are like, how many Scientologists are leaving? Well, if there was 100,000, let's say in 1990, and there's 35,000 now, that's how many, that's that's the rate that they're leaving. So we're down to like the final, like we could we could watch it happen live. It's, it's going to be, if you're watching, can, you're watching right now. We can right watch the last all, water circle yeah. down the drain. Yeah. Yes, we could watch the... <laughs> We could watch the last person at each Scientology org and leave and turn out the lights 
Yeah. We can see that happen one by one all around and, the world. And to everyone watching from Oso, you don't want to be in that last Yeah. Two. Just leave now. Yeah. That, <laughs> It'll we, be better. We'll help you. <laughs> yeah. We need, to, we need to raise a lot of money for the Aftermath Foundation because they're coming out faster than they right. ever have. <laughs> okay. Blazon666, uh, is Larice likely still DM's mistress? Also, Vanity Fair said DM liked to surround himself with servile young beauties. What is that about? <laughs> well, the first part of this question, I have never believed that that's true. I know a lot of people do. I don't think so. Yeah. Larice is not, not, I, I don't know what the right word to describe her is androgynous, like maybe very non feminine sexy. I, I don't know what the, I don't know what the appropriate term is, but she yeah. is just like a non event when it comes to, uh, yeah, she's, not, she's not really butch. She's not really femme. She's just kind of, she could be a cute young woman. She could be a cute young boy. Um, she could be, um, she doesn't make herself Not out. She doesn't anymore. put her, well, I know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. She, but she doesn't, um, she's, she could be an old boy or an old woman. She doesn't, um, she doesn't put herself out there. Like I'm, I'm attract. I, I want to, I want to have well, a so relationship what, what's, or what's so striking about it is she has two sisters who are very beautiful. Yes, like right. very strikingly beautiful, yeah. attractive women, True. and she is just not. And I have never seen evidence that her and David Miscavige have any sort of a sexual relationship whatsoever. I have never seen evidence that David Miscavige has any sort of sexual relationship with anybody, yeah, including Shelley. Yeah. Like sure. that lived in separate rooms. And, you, you know, even when Shelly, before Shelly was banished, Shelly had her bedroom. Dave had his. He slept in his room. She slept in hers. It wasn't ever apparent that they were, uh, you know, a normal married couple. And as for the servile young beauties, whatever that, I guess, servile, David Miscavige likes good looking people both men and women. It was a requirement for RTC for at least the public facing people in mm -hmm. RTC to be attractive. And if you see the pictures of the RTC crew that were taken, you know, like the RTC representatives, the ones that interacted with the public, not Barbara in Treasury, or no. but the, but that that picture that I'm in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. the, yeah, the picture that Claire's in. There's a whole lot of people that look like Claire. All yeah. the the beautiful and and most of them are women. And I this was in 1995, 1996. So right. yeah, much that younger. That 1996 picture had one male in it. Yeah, I think it was and 20. It was 20 women and one male. Yep. Right. But that male was a model looking guy. Yeah. Yeah. You know and his I mean? wife <laughs> and him and his wife were kind of like Eric Prophet. Yeah. Right? And his wife, yes. Marissa Prophet Lich. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They would like, they would look like they could be on the cover of, you know, teen magazine or something. Yeah. Or in an yeah. Amber, Amber Crombie and Finch <laughs> ad or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Adam Stoner. <laughs> <laughs> Would love to hear more about Ron's journals. I've heard tapes online, but can't find much info. What are they? Why were they made? How do they differ from Flag Order's bulletins? What a great question. That Nobody is a has great question. ever asked this question before, no. and it is amazing. Thanks, Adam Stoner. Yes. Okay. Ron's journals are um, things that Hubbard put out for broad public um, release. Like, yeah to go out to every Scientologist in the world. They, they were designed for Scientologists. They weren't designed for public outside of Scientology, but it was Hubbard sort of letting everybody know, here's what's going on, this is what I'm up to, here's how the world looks right now. And they were recordings. Most of them. Some yeah. of them are not. Some yeah. of them are, are runs journals that were published as written, but almost Almost all of them are recordings. And there was a very famous one 
called RJ67, where Hubbard, and you can find that just by Googling it, where Hubbard talks about the cataclysm, the great cataclysm that occurred on planet Earth 75 million years ago. This is when he was in Las Palmas and had just finished, quote unquote, researching OT3 and writing the Xenu story. And he told the Scientology world, oh my God, this great thing is coming. Here is, you know, and sort of, you know, alluded to what was contained in OT3. Um, he used these things both to promote stuff, like he would say, oh, I've been doing this research and this OT8 is coming or something is happening. Or he used them to reassure Scientologists that even though there may have been, you know, uh, legal cases where they got found guilty and fined $20 million, <laughs> everything was actually okay. It was just the monkeys in the trees yapping and... It was like, like to rally the troops. Yeah, stay, stay with the program. What is most... And this is a, a hugely important point, and I make this point in my book. What is most incredible is that Hubbard spent his life telling everybody everything that he was doing and what all his plans were and this is what's coming at blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> all the way to the the very most important thing that he should have issued a runs journal about which is what happens when i die yeah he never said anything publicly about that even though he theoretically causatively dropped his body to continue his OT research and he didn't leave a message for Scientologists not recorded or written that said okay I'm heading off to target two and I'm going to continue my research and I'm leaving Scientology in the very capable hands of Pat and Annie Broker or Howdy Doody or anybody <laughs> nothing just a big fat nothing yeah yep I would have loved to be a fly on the wall to to observe that causatively dropping your body stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, there was there was one fly on that wall, Sarge, and he talked right. talked about yes. what really happened there. There's a yeah. there was another fly on the wall too, Ray Midoff, and he's never talked about anything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Amy D. Hello, Mark, Claire, and Mike. Aaron mentioned in his live yesterday that he never received an official letter that he was declared. Have any of you received that letter? And if so, what did it say? Yes. Not me. Cla we did. We Claire both did. and I got those letters. And in one of the very first spy file videos I do on my channel, I show them and I read all of mine and I read all of Claire's in the video and highlight and t talk of the whole thing. And it basically just said, the funny thing was when we were at the base, I was in a, I would get in a lot more trouble. I would stir it up a lot more than Claire was. Uh, she never really, I don't think she really made any waves or nobody I, perceived I, her as a troublemaker. <laughs> and, the biggest uh, trouble, just, I, the biggest trouble I got in was because Marty blew, Marty escaped. Yeah. I, got, I, right. I was commived for that a committee of evidence. I was, you know, put under tribunal and denied dining privileges that was a religious I... arbitration claire yeah <laughs> because someone else escaped claire got in trouble yeah. <laughs> bad so prison guard etiquette there from claire <laughs> exactly um, but yeah i was i was not a rebel like you were Mark. yeah but when we got the sp declares the the it says mark hadley declared suppressive person um anyway when we got them Claire's was way worse than mine. Like it seemed like she was the ringleader of the two of us. And I, I was your like, exact quote was, wow, look at you. They made you out to be like the wicked witch of the West. Yeah. I was like, wow, Claire, good for you. Way to, way to finish strong. They held, they held out on me evidently. And they were really, really hurt that I escaped. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty awesome. All right. Jacob Hockey, back when DM and Shelley were still regularly seen together, what did they call each other? Did they use first names or call each other sir? Well, certainly Dave did not call Shelley sir. Yes. But everybody he, else did. Everybody else did. But Shelley called Dave Dave most of the time, but sometimes would refer to him as sir. Like 
or when, COB. Or COB. Um, when in circumstances where there are a bunch of other people around, which was pretty often, um, and he was, you know, dressing someone down or whatever, and then he'd turn to her and say, get this, get this guy in for a sec check right now. She, her response would be, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Like, not yeah. yes, Dave, yes, yeah. sir. But typically, when they were alone or just with, you know, people in RTC or, you know, the close inner circle, it would be Dave. Yeah. Do yeah. you have any other thoughts on that one, guys? No. no. I mean, would she, would, if, if we would be in a meeting and then he would leave and then she would talk to us, like, try to, you know, get everybody riled up, like, hey, guys, we got to do this. COB's got a lot on his plate, blah, blah, blah. She would, I, that's how I most heard her refer to him is just COB. Yeah. And someone was asking, she, Shelly was Dave's assistant. So her title was COB assistant as, yeah. as different to Larice, who was COB communicator. Just right. for what that's worth. Hey, real right. quick, before we keep going, Mike, how long do you want to do this for? Oh, I wanted to, to, to keep it, uh, maybe an hour and a half at the at the most, and I okay, know that so, means we won't even finish in an hour and a half. But well, then we should say that at twelve forty <laughs> or what? What time is it it's where you 2 are? Two thirty now. Good at two forty five. That should be the cutoff for questions. So because there's already seventy questions we have to go through. Oh wow! Yep. And we're almost at fifteen hundred people watching. Yay. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. Let's just give it fifteen more minutes. That's a cutoff for questions, and we'll try to rock through as many of these as possible. I think most of them are super chats, and um, yeah, we're gonna have to kind of start uh, picking up the pace here a little. Oh, okay, Mister Boss Man. Well, I'm yeah. just I'm just trying to manage expectations. Just trying to manage expectations. <laughs> these questions are great. I'm they like, are. Really? We're getting a lot really? of good ones. Yeah, you U.S. Some... people are falling down. These uh, other time zone folks have got some questions. Well, these these other time zone folks have been trying to ask these questions for weeks. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the scrapbooker. What would cause a COS to close completely? I read somewhere that there was a COS in Omaha, Nebraska back in the day. Hmm. Never heard of one in Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah. Perhaps, Never... it, was a, perhaps it was a mission. Yeah. yeah. Missions have closed down all over the world routinely. Yeah, they, they just that you know someone starts with a flurry of oh I'm going to bring Scientology to this area and make a little money on the side and then find out I'm not making any money at all nobody's coming in yeah and this is just a big pain in the ass and they close down like mm -hmm. even even ones that were opened by celebrities like Lisa Marie and Isaac Hayes opened a a mission in Memphis with great fanfare and everybody showed up and pretty soon it was gone. And, you know, Ann Archer did one in Santa Monica and that too was gone. And, you know, they come and go. Scientology uh, organizations closing down happens more rarely. Although David Miscavige actually has the distinction of having closed down more Scientology organizations than any person in the history of Scientology. Hubbard yep. says that is a massive, massive crime in Scientology to close or combine an organization. I did a blog post about this at one point. And he has closed or combined organizations all over the world, mostly celebrity centers combining with the local organization or day and foundation orgs combining, or, you know, even the original, what Hubbard called foundation org at St. Hill, which was the, he started an organization that he called the foundation evenings and weekends to cater to the working population of East Grinstead. And uh, based on that, all organizations in Scientology or all locations were supposed to have what's called a day organization and a foundation organization. Miscavige closed the St. Hill Foundation that was created by Ron. And that is like a, uh, that's a big no-no. Yeah. yeah, well, as Mark Fisher just commented, according to Hubbard, it's a, it's actually a suppressive act. Yes. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> yep. But don't dare say that Dave commits suppressive oh, acts. No. Oh, oh so his... are you taking notes? 
His AA run, SPTV yeah. is rocking and a rolling. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, next. Kakutogi, Kakutogi Road. Mike, we need some crazy Bill Robertson stories. Tell us some. Oh, my God. Okay. We, <laughs> is he the one here, that had guns at the end base? One. Here is one. Yeah. When I was the head of CMOCW, I got a... a and. I was basically at that point the only person in Clearwater who had a direct communication channel to the Int Basic Gold because I had been there and yeah. most of the people who were in Clearwater had not. And so I got a phone call from someone saying, Bill Robertson has escaped the Int Base and we believe he's heading to Clearwater. And you got to corral him if he gets there and get get him back to the int base. And Bill Robertson at that time was working directly for David Miscavige, who was the action chief CMO international, meaning he was responsible for sending out these C organization missions, Bill Robertson and Jens Bogvard and Norman Starkey and a few other people were part of what he called his missionary unit. They were the people that he used to send out on these missions. And Bill Robertson, um, like I described in one of our earlier chats, was a, a sort of a wild and crazy guy. He, he'd been a biker before he got into Scientology, like a, a, a serious biker. Like a Hell's Angel like type Like a of Hell's guy? Angel guy. Oh, my God. Wow. So had his wife, Joan. The two of them had. <laughs> wow. Anyway, and, and he still had that sort of demeanor. He kind of looked like a... <laughs> a Viking or something like big. Oh my gosh. Okay. So Bill shows up and I had known him forever, like since the Apollo and I'd done various things with him. Oh, they were right. He did go to he, Clearwater. He came to Clearwater. Wow. And I get this phone call and it's like, are you in your office? I said, yep. Who's this? It's Captain Bill. Okay. <laughs> I need to clear out everybody in CMO CW. I'm coming in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so long story short, he eventually comes and he comes in and he sits down in my office and he has got this woman with him. Her name was Daphna Dan. And it was some woman that he had hooked up with. And I have no idea how he even met her. I, she was some sort of a, Scientologist in the Clearwater area, and he comes in and he sits down. And he says, The FBI is following me, and not just the FBI, there's aliens who are following me. Oh my like, goodness! Oh okay, good, Bill. He said, I said, Who is this that's with you? It's Daphna. She, she has been, she has been my partner since we. <laughs> Since we occupied, <laughs> the... oh my God, Mike since can't even we... <laughs> say it. Since since we occupied the captain's suite on board the spaceship XP four ninety seven. Oh my goodness! Wow. And I'm like, oh, okay. And How do you spell said, Daphne's last name? I think it was D A N. Is she, was she, what nationality was she? I have no idea. Some, I, I don't, I actually don't know. Because oh. Daphna then looks over to me after Bill has introduced her as his paramour from, you know, 400 million years ago on his spaceship. And he said, I, and he goes, and the reason I know that she was because she was able to describe exactly what the day call was exactly the same as my recall. Okay. And Daphne wow. Dan looks over at me and goes, do you like unicorns? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, and boy. I'm like, uh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple sandwiches short of a picnic. <laughs> oh, it, okay. So there's plenty more, but that's, I, we're not that's gonna, a good one. We're not yeah, that stick was a great one. Too long. <laughs> Okay, Caitlin Pratt, can YouTube be trolled like A and E podcast sponsors? Uh, really tough, really, really tough. Because 
the sponsors on YouTube or the ads that get placed on YouTube, they're like, they're placing ads they, everywhere and they have no control. Like they don't, re unless someone is asking you to do a read, like an actual. Yeah, like a mattress uh, company or a yeah, wallet saying, company. You know, or You know, Aaron did a couple of them about some security thing. Yeah. Yes, and, VPN. Yeah. And, but other than that, there's no, there's no, like, writing to, uh, you know, Purina Dog Chow because one of their ads appeared on SPTV is going to go over like, huh? I didn't yeah. know what they're talking about. We didn't know that we were, we just pay Google and they give us, we pay by how many viewers there are. Yeah, That's it. I was going to say, um, the most screenshots I get are, Tom Cruise movie ads that are on our channels and Scientology ads that are on our right. channels. So if Scientology wants us not to get ads, maybe they shouldn't be running ads on our channels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Sherry Ann, within your 80 to 100 plus working days in the ESO. Hour. 80 to 100 hour. Week. Oh, hey, 80 week. to 100 hour week working days in the ESO. What did you look forward to day to day? Did anything bring you joy? Sleep. Going to uh, bed. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> Food and sleep. Every SEOG member is going to oh answer that goodness. the same way. Yeah. yeah. Sleep yeah, was a big deal sleep. and food was a big deal. Like the fact that we got to go to In and Out or Jack in the Box, like oh, we would yeah. sneak off in the middle of the night and go get a, you know, some egg rolls that and a was double a bacon cheese. Big deal. <laughs> It was yeah, like I, I think my uh, only guilty pre guilty pleasure was if I could stay awake reading a few pages of a fiction novel was like the only way I could just you know mentally shut out. Right. Okay, let's keep going. Kimberly Stovall, when it comes to the OT levels, who controls how you go to the next level? What levels did you each achieve? Thanks. Well, when it comes to the OT levels, who controls is the the person in charge of your technical progress, uh, yeah. whether it's called the director of processing or the case supervisor or the technical secretary, whoever it is. So you have to be invited to participate in the OT levels. You can't just go show up. You have to get an actual invitation, in theory, at least. Yeah, and and, that, it, and and let's not forget that's after some pretty vigorous interrogations, as to you know your intentions, all of your yeah exactly everything you've ever done. Have you ever looked at anything negative? All that kind of stuff. But yes, and for each OT level, there's an expected end phenomena. They call it. You know, you're <clears throat> you're supposed to achieve certain things, and once you say that you've achieved those things, then you're case supervisor will validate those and and then you attest and you get a certificate what level what level what ot levels did you guys get to mike you go first ot7 i was in the middle of ot5 i haven't read dianetics and i'm a <laughs> i'm a gold star sp i have all ingrams bts i got it all Immaculately in on. place. I've not lost one single engram <sighs> or one single BT. But but you have you have yeah. gotten rid of a lot of evil purposes and destructive intentions. No, I didn't no? get. I never got FP. I don't. I uh, I may have gotten like one or two FPRD sessions in my entire fifteen years at the Ent Base. Oh God! I so I didn't even get rid day. of evil purposes. So I'm well, good you, to go. You did do some of the lower grades, honey, I think. Yeah, Remember? but you don't get rid of BTs or engrams or any of that nonsense. And all that was done by Tom Cruise himself. And it was he was a newbie and I was his guinea pig and he wasn't that good. So <laughs> I, I wasn't like running around like going like Tom Cruise for best auditor of the year award after that. I was just like, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> oh, okay. Kitty man, Claire, the other night you said when you were about six years old, you lost a friend because her mother got declared. I lost my best friend at that age because of stuff that was going on with the adults. I'm sorry that happened to you. Thank you, Kitty Mom. Yes. That's very kind. Thank yep. you. Jackson's in the house. Nice. Mm. Jackson. I'm Tombstone. Your Huckleberry. That's from Tombstone. I'm Is your Huckleberry. Yeah, that's what uh, Val Kilmer says. 
I'm your huckleberry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right, Gary? Get in the comments. Tell me I'm right. Bert but Pineapple. Pineapple. Do you have first-hand knowledge that the books from Hubbard's bookcase in his office at St. Hill were moved to the United States? No. He's always asked. Bert knowledge. Pineapple has a fascination about the books. Um, the Bert Pineapple, <laughs> the books are just copies of the books. They're not L. Ron Hubbard's personal books. All of his personal books are at a place called Church of Spiritual Technology, or they're at his house at the base and in storage or something like that. They've kind of bundled up all his personal stuff. Yeah. Am I, is that right, Mike? Yep. Yeah. I, I was part of the project to get uh, the whole list of all the books that he ever had in any office into the Bonnie View house uh, at the base. Yeah. It was a yeah. large list. In his offices around the world, those are just the copies that everybody has. Yep. Or leather bound editions. Okay. First time in the live chat, SE Dick 89. Quick question for Mark Were there any hard feelings against Mike after you blew because of COS fair game policies? No. I, f I found out about a lot of that stuff after Mike had left because he smuggled out a bunch of these documents and I got some from Marty and I got some from him. But uh, we were already friends by the time I found out that he was arguing with Dave over who blown for good was and all that nonsense. And also it's like, um, I don't know. It's like if you're in prison and there's a prisoner guard and then you get out, you serve your time and you get out and the prison guards doing something else. And you're like, if the prison guard wasn't an, an, an ass to you, then th why do you have a beef with the pr He was doing his job. It's like, whatever. We all had jobs to do. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think Mike joined the Sea Org when he was a kid so that he could inflict pain on me 20 years later. It's like, whatever. I did. Shit. I did. Oh, okay. That was, there you that, go. Well, screw they you, offered that. They offered that to me as an incentive. <laughs> yeah. There's going to be a guy that's going to be contract. born 30 years from now that you're going to harass. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Shrink, what is the financial position of Scientology? I've heard conflicting information. Some have said they have hundreds of millions in cash, while others say it's an organization on the decline with no money to pay staff. Uh, both are true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in fact, it's not hundreds of millions, it is billions. Like in three billion? When, yeah. Three, well, that billion? was it was three it was at least two billion when I was last there. CSI had about a billion or the, you know, Scientology and the IAS had about a billion. And wow. Miscavige and religious was always... Technology Center had 30 million in yeah. right. their <clears throat> coffers. Yeah, yeah, so all the Scientologists who are watching it, they could pay the staff more money. They could pay the Sea Org members more money. And they probably, with all that money, could buy a few extra rolls of toilet paper for the org that, you know, they could put in the bathrooms. But they, Dave Miscavige chooses not to. So that gives you an idea of the kind of the mentality over there. Well, despite the fact that, if you recall, back when he was first doing the Ideal Orgs, David Miscavige promised all these staff that he had personally reworked the staff pay system. That's right. And did a whole bunch of briefings about how he had discovered the suppressive people who had messed up this whole system and meant that no staff could get paid, but now it was all changing. Now everything was going to be peachy keen and wonderful and staff members would be paid a living wage. Yeah. Never happened. No. Nope. So it is an organization on the decline, like big time, but it's not the, 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 the coincidence of not paying staff has nothing to, it, it's not date coincidence. That it's always been that expression. way. It's always been that way. Yeah. It's set up when when an org makes a hundred dollars, eighty of it goes up to the next higher organization to get to RTC and CSI, Church of Scientology International. And that org has to fight over the twenty dollars that's left over. That's how it works. Right. Okay, so we're past the, the 45 minute mark. So no more no, questions. No more I, was, I was just gonna bring that up. Yep, I got it. No more questions, folks. Oliver Kletchik. Love you guys. My OG COS source of truth was Mark Bunker. What was it like when you first met him after leaving the church? 
Oh, actually, it was wonderful because I had interacted with Mark when he was with the Lisa McPherson Trust and I was in Clearwater supposedly preventing the Lisa McPherson Trust from disrupting Scientology. And I remember when we first met, the, the, the wonderful thing about Mark Bunker is that he has always been gracious, polite, and um, respectful. Respect, that's exactly the right word, respectful. And even when he was standing outside, you know, and there were crazy picketers and this, he was always sort of the voice of reason. And that is Mark Bunker. That is his personality. He is just the nicest, <laughs> politest, most respectful guy you could possibly ever want to know. When, yeah. when Anonymous showed up and started protesting Scientology, Mark Bunker kind of corralled them and was like, hey, don't do the illegal things and don't do nonsense. Be respectful and people will take you seriously. And they said, his words are wise. His face is beard. Wise beard man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Chirzosi. Hi, Mike, Claire, and Mark. Have you seen the EKR submission form on the RTC website? <laughs> I LOL for 20 minutes when I, I read it. I've filled it out They're before. Basically crowdsourcing <laughs> information on suppressives. It's replete with policy references. Yes. Yeah, we've of all course. seen that. I, it... filled, I filled one out when I first left. I wrote a knowledge report on David Miscavige, and I filled it out on that form, and I sent it to uh... RTC. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, great. It's, it's always good for a laugh, that thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. NS Anderson, Mike, loved your book, have read all of your books. What happened to the Fair Game podcast and is it coming back? Okay, so this goes on the bingo card for today. Uh, Aaron yeah. Smith Levin bingo card, SPTV. Uh, thank you for the comment about the book. What happened to the Fair Game podcast? It got mangled. Um, and yes, the plan is to, to bring it back. There's just a whole lot of complicated things that are uh, involved behind the scenes. Partly me getting going on this YouTube channel is toward that end. And, you know, more to be announced as time goes by. Okay. You guys will be the first to know if the Fair Game podcast comes back. We're not going to keep it a secret. We'll tell you. <laughs> yes. Rebecca Blansnig. Finally, I catch SPTV live. Grutzi from Switzerland. Nice. Grutzi, I never Switzerland. heard that. Is yeah. that thank you, I wonder? It's it's pro hopefully it's, it's something good. Hopefully it's not like some racial slur. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm pretty sure it's, it's a no. pleasant treat. Oh, by the way, let's say hi to Stephanie Hutchison. She's here. Oh, oh wow. Steph is here? We love yes. Stephanie. Oh, she is wonderful. And yes. so is this person. Oh, my okay. goodness. Okay, Marilyn. This is my... Oh, my, Oops, oh, my Mike. Oh, oh. <laughs> Can't lose your cape. <laughs> it's so good. It's the Amazing. best. It's my... And, it, and, <laughs> and, you know, she has a store. We've got to figure out a way, Claire, to link... Maybe when we redo the SP store, we can say if you want Moldy. bobblehead accessories, you can go Moldy to this site. To it in the chat. Okay, oh, perfect. Good. Yeah. She makes yep. a little zine. These are crochet. These are all handmade. And she does this. I think she does this either as a hobby or for her living. But she gave these to us for free. She donated these. But we want to make sure if other people want these for their bobblehead, you uh, you can get those direct from Marilyn. And um, yes. she should be rewarded for her for her labor and her efforts it's amazing Absolutely. i love it it really is so good it's Smiley. one of my prized possessions leah remini ever do one of your lives oh yeah i think so yeah she's done i once, think she's once, done we, lives once... with aaron no yep no she, she... did a live with aaron when he oh, was running right. for city council she went on yeah. his youtube channel with him and oh, said right. vote for aaron you're right you're I right. know I'm right. So oh. yes, oh, well, you're always right. Mm, not That's always, what I've but discovered fair percentage. 
Mark Just has like a huge me. stack of laminated "Told You So" cards, Mike. You I do. Yeah, I do. I've got them right here in my pocket. I oh, I don't have they're a the pocket. One, the, they're the ones he stole when we were playing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, whatever that game is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> nice save. I don't there, remember. Mike. Good Dang. catch. Let's not talk I about that. Because I'm a dirty cracker licker doesn't mean uh, I always hard hide cards in my pocket. But <laughs> sometimes when I get a few drinks in me, I might stash an ace or two. Okay, Ruth W., why do any of you think that some Scientologists seem to be able to cut familiar emotions easily and some hold their ground like you all? I find it interesting, and you all are wonderful. Well, thank you. Familiar. I think that means fami familiar emotions or familial or... I'm Either sure one, I, familiar or familiar to be could, able to could work. Familiar emotions easily. Hmm. That's Some a good question. Ground. Interesting. Yeah, we're not robots. We have real. We experience real emotions. Um, yeah. We just. Uh, mm, I I really genuinely do think, Mike, that we were well conditioned by Miscavige to be. I mean, even at the Imp base, we just so you guys know that are watching and listening, and all the Scientologists out there, the way Dra David Miscavige treats us now, he treat treated us when we worked there. And we were being yelled at and screamed at and yelled and made to do horrible things the whole time we were working with him. So now that we're in our own, uh, out on our own, and we get to sleep and eat and kind of do what we want and do it this, and then he's yelling us on the internet or harassing us on the internet. <laughs> it's sort of it's it's a little teeny bit amusing. Like, dude, you know we don't work there anymore, right? You can't you can talk shit all you want, it doesn't. It's not going to change anything that I'm doing. Yeah. So, if, if anything, he, it just tells us we're doing the right thing. Exactly. Right. So, yeah, it's not. Um, I don't think we have some superior control over our emotions. We were just beat. We were just, you know, when you get beat and beat and beat and beat, and you live through that, it's like, what are you going to do? You, you already beat me a ton. So, come on. Yeah, and we all still have family members in Scientology that we'd yeah. love to get out. It's a bummer. Yep. Yep. Okay. Next up, Ron, Mike, given your Sea Org past on the ship, do you have any desire now to go sailing or spend time on the water? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, going sailing next week. Yeah, we're all going <laughs> sailing. We're all going sailing next week. Mm. And we went... Fishing when Mark and Claire were visiting last time, and yeah, we have we have plenty of plenty of good time on the water. Love sure. the water. Okay. Not a lot of Sea Org members getting seasick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to there and back. At what rate would you estimate members are leaving COS? E.g., how many per month? Um. I'm not quite sure how to answer this question, frankly. I think that it's uh, probably in the percentage bracket, it's easier to make an estimate. Because I would say that they are probably losing 1% of their membership every month. And de like decreasing the size uh, like 10% per annum. Um, that would be my guess. And that's also somewhat modified by the fact that there are a lot of people who leave that don't announce the fact that they are leaving and are actually sort of secretly no longer Scientologists yeah. because they don't want to lose their family, they don't want to lose their job, whatever it is that is that motivates them, they just sort of quietly... Uh, fall away from the flock they yep. they call it under the radar inside scientology so they they kind of sneak out the back door and don't tell anybody and then if scientology comes around and says hey you got to come to the event they're like yeah yeah absolutely absolutely and then they just don't show up to the event so right. they kind of yeah. just play along to get along so they don't have to be disconnected from the family and that i would say I could safely say there's probably 20, 30% of Scientologists are in that category. Yeah, I'm sure. It may be more than that. Yeah, actually. but that's a safe <laughs> estimate. Yep. 
Okay, Shay Anderson, San Francisco, mid 2000s financial district, Montgomery Station. COS set up in the middle of a subway, testing. Used to walk by yelling, Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> keeping, keeping everybody away. It's like going, yeah. Lepa. Yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Catherine asks, since DM is so like LRH, has anybody told him he's out of valence? Yeah, good one. Yeah, <laughs> good comment, Catherine. <laughs> that is a great comment. Nobody has told Dave Miscavige no, that he's out of valence. Not in the no. sea work. <laughs> right. Thinks too much. In light of his turnaround, why do you think Marty Rathbun's YouTube channel still has all of the anti scientology <laughs> videos? This is one of those. <laughs> it's because I guess that it would become too obvious or too yeah uh, that's what it is <laughs> that he was just a shill if all of that now came down he's got to pretend in order to have any credibility theoretically at all that he's just a free agent yeah and that but what he is saying now is just as true as what he said you know three years ago yeah which it's which is a study in dichotomy because he's like saying black is black it's black it's always been black and black is black and then in the next video is like yeah no well black is actually white and all these people that say black is black are r r ridiculous and uh, I've always known black is white and you're like dude you just did a video saying the exact opposite <laughs> and, and yet his videos are on our hate sites too right yeah and also the videos he did on his ones? own he's just wearing his whatever clothes he's wearing he's doing whatever but the new videos are very heavily produced and they're mm -hmm. lit and there's a set and he's wearing a suit and you're like well these it's are the, definitely the not the same as the other videos yeah it's the pow <laughs> video for yes. right. yeah the, the gold smp <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly look Oh my goodness! With a with a lamp in the background and yeah. a plant and a lit I, wall and speaking of which, I would love to see the outtakes from those. Oh, I know. <laughs> I oh, would. Too. That would be so amazing. That would hey, be amazing. Sea Org members that have outtakes, get us those outtakes. Come on, yeah. hook it up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pay good money for that. No, we won't. No, well, you I give them to us for nothing. free. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jama seventy six from Belgium. Thanks for the timing. You're very welcome. They got a court victory here in 2015. Judge, Scientology unfairly hounded for years by Belgian authorities, unquote. Rare win for them. Any news about Scientology in Belgium at the moment? No, I don't Just have any news. Just as stagnant as it's always been. <laughs> they have a, a very large building and another uh, PR office, both in Belgium. Is that the human rights office is there, right? Yes, exactly. And neither of them have any activity. Um, I don't I, I don't know anything else other than that. Sorry. But nice to hear from someone in Belgium. Yeah. We have 80 comments starred right now, Mike. Oh, sh oh wow. <laughs> yeah. You got to do about 30 seconds a comment is usually about the amount of time you can spend on one comment. Here, I can take over putting them up and starring them, and you you guys just focus on answering. How about that? Oh, Perfect. okay, Love Claire. It. You're yeah. up. You're up. Right, so Stacy Y. Katie said Scientology made her look younger. Katie. Which the Katie, Katie Lohman, the Playboy oh, playmate who playmate Tom Cruise lady. came to her in a dream. For you all, getting out did. Probably just because you can now sleep. Yes, absolutely mm, right. 100%. Definitely. Code Monkey. Do you know the status of the Moore Park, California mission? I have never seen it open, but I still left aftermath cards on the door. Nice. So the aftermath is more active in the Moore Park mission than the Moore Park mission is. Yep. We probably have more supporters that to, that go to it as well. <laughs> the Thandic Rockland should say, go see a therapist. You need it to DM. Yeah. <laughs> He's not going to take that advice. No. <laughs> well, he wouldn't take any advice from us. No yeah. matter who. Linda Brookshire. Thank you, Linda. Shannon Doyle. In one of Aaron's lives, someone asked him about what he would do after Scientology falls. He said, nothing. LOL. Wouldn't there be so many more stories to tell with no threat left? Well, I guess. Although, but why would we need to people... tell the stories if everyone left? <laughs> exactly. If it's, if it's fallen apart, there's not much point in yeah, uh, you know, beating that dead horse. 
Mm-hmm. Now we just go off into the, we just ride off into the sunset or we just go back to doing all the same stuff we've been doing this whole time, which is living our lives. We're just right. doing this because, uh, this, we're just doing this because we're really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. And, and we get to hang out with our friends. Yeah. <laughs> if Brett Grace, if you guys ever saw DM again, act like you don't even remember who he is. <laughs> yeah. That's kryptonite for us. Oh, so, that's a great what, one. Great. That is, that like, is the, it, the comment of the yeah. day so far. S- excuse yes. me, sir. Can you can you tell me the time? <laughs> <laughs> That w- that's my new answer. You for whenever look- somebody says, uh, what would you say? I would say, excuse me, sir, do you have the time? You look familiar. Yeah. Um, are you, were, are you, you a waiter? My, were you on my 11-year-old's football team? <laughs> Stacy Rabbits, if Scientology has a child and it is disabled in any way, how do they audit that? What would they say? Okay. Um, the answer to this is generally they would say, that that Thetan has committed some horrendous crimes or transgressions in a past life, and that is now being manifested in their uh, dis- disability yeah. when they were born. And they pulled uh, the, it in. Yeah, they pulled yeah. it in. And the auditing would depend on what the disability was, but there would be an attempt to. Uh, uncover the engrams or or the evil purposes that had caused that condition to exist. Yeah. Yeah. As long, as, they, the, as, long as the parents could pay. Exactly. I was just going to say, as long as there's money, it doesn't matter if the if the child's getting better or worse. They'll just keep taking the money until the the parents aren't willing to pay. Yeah. Anymore. And Hubbard says Scientology makes the able more able. So you would never see somebody, a, a disabled person, in an organization doing service. At least I never did. No, it's, no. it's yeah. very, very uncommon. Yeah. My dog has no nose. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry Happily about that. SO often work in different states and barely see each other. Phone calls, but happy together. Could this be the case with DM and Shelly or not? No. No. And also, like Claire and I were separated for many years, and and there weren't even phone calls. I don't even no. think when I was in Denmark, I ever I was in Denmark for months and months. I don't think we ever talked on the well, phone. We did once or twice, but we had to have written authorization to yeah, make a to, call first, yeah. <laughs> even to you, my husband. I yeah. And in fact, um, in some cases, when I was in Religious Technology Center in Clearwater, Florida, I made a written request to get authorization and it was denied (laughs) yeah yeah so i was in denmark for many months while claire was in uh gilman hot springs california and then when she was in florida and i was back in gilman hot springs uh we didn't talk there was almost i want to say like two years two maybe three years where we may maybe saw each other like four or five times in in three years so it's you know I, I had very similar experience with Kathy, and perhaps even more. Like yeah. I, I, the amount of time in our marriage, which was uh, seventy-six, nearly thirty years, that we were actually located together in the same, the same city, was probably five out of those thirty years. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that the fact that you're married to somebody else doesn't factor into your job position, the organization, your your where you go, what you do. It factors in not at all, except that you have a birthing with that person that's not a dorm. That's the only real life uh, thing that affects uh, that your marriage will affect in the same. Yeah, most most married couples don't even eat meals together. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Next Beata, question. Mark, Claire, being inside, could you discuss some weird situations in private or is trusting each other even inside a marriage not possible in COS? Yeah, not Claire, possible. Yeah. Claire yeah. ratted me out on multiple occasions. She wrote knowledge reports on me and served me right up to the powers that be with no hesitation. <laughs> so I never did one, that myself to her. These- but it did happen. It did happen. But that's yeah. okay. uh, you know what? 
People are asking questions. They want to know the answer. And I'm just giving them answers. You ratted me out. You wrote knowledge reports on me. And I didn't do that to you. So yep, move it yeah. on. Thanks. Scott Davidson, how much of the money ends up spent on the steel plates at CSD? <laughs> oh, when is Dougie Fresh releasing an SPTV diss track? Uh, <laughs> if you want how much money? Uh, Hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. have been invested in those between the steel plates and digging vaults and buying buying the uh, tiles off the space shuttle and you know all the other idiocy that goes yeah. along with that hundreds of millions of dollars yep sarah woodrow two pounds thanks thank you, sarah. sarah thank you sarah william tubb but what will be left of Scientology when DM drops this body and comes back as a six foot six <laughs> giant? <laughs> yeah. Dave's, by the time Dave gets back, it'll be done. There won't be anything left. Oh, I love this one. Matt Denny, hey, Matt Denny, hey Claire, do you find yeah. saltless crackers around the house still <laughs> dirty little cracker like the bug is? <laughs> We don't even have crackers. This cracker thing is the most bizarre story I've ever heard because I'm not a real big cracker guy. I know. I don't even understand. Like I can't. I can't easily remember a time I've watched you even eat crackers. That's right. I, or not. I know. That's why it's so <laughs> weird to me that I don't eat crackers now. I don't even remember eating crackers there. And even if I did eat crackers, where would I get said crackers? There wasn't a you cracker know. store. It doesn't need to be any basis for the. I know it's just so just weird to me that I, <laughs> out of everything yeah. to say about me, dirty cracker liquor. Oh my I goodness! Know. Wiggly woo. Do you guys think that DM influenced LRH's mentality actions in the last years due to his control of the communications channels? Yes, I, you you're think shaking so? your head. Absolutely. I mean, mm -hmm. his he mentality. That David, well mentality actions oh like, okay he was controlling what was being said to hubbard and what information he was getting so he was making himself look good and anybody that he thought yeah. was a potential rival to him looked bad like yeah. david mayo that's I true mean, hubbard ended up issuing a thing about the the great squirrel david mayo because david of mayo, the stuff he fed to that dave fed to him Right. David Mayo was the person that, that was brought to La Quinta to audit Hubbard after his heart attack, which is where Knots, the new era Dianetics for OTs, came from, from that auditing sessions that David Mayo did with him. And then Hubbard had David Mayo write up the new era Dianetics for OTs materials and then send him out to export that yeah. flag. I... And then ultimately... Hubbard said Mayo's a squirrel because he had Hubbard had actually said that Mayo was supposed to sec check David Miscavige and was supposed to get to the bottom of what was going on with Dave. Wow. And that never happened, but mm. David Mayo ended up becoming persona non grata in the eyes of L. Ron Hubbard. Wow. So yes, absolutely. I don't I I would argue that LRH was already mental anyway. Oh, yes, yes, yes. But the I'm actions, saying, yes, yes, I could see that. Yep. Okay, Absolutely. here's the next question. Calablox. Hello, and thank you for the timing from Germany. Keep up the great work. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Carmen Martz. In Scientology lawsuits, why does Scientology have a say in what the plaintiff says or does in order for the lawsuit to go away? Isn't that blackmail? Love you guys. Totally have a I think she's that. talking about this arbitration nonsense that they keep pulling. No, I think that she's talking about what is contained in any settlement for the case to go away. Oh, oh say yes. in what the plaintiff says or does in order for the lawsuit to go away. Well, they do to the degree that that, that when a lawsuit is settled, both sides have to agree. Yeah. Certain people have agreed to certain things. Other people have not agreed. Yeah. And like Paulette Cooper, she didn't get she a gag order. She never agreed, and that case went away. Um, so they have a say because ultimately a court proceeding and the resolution of a court proceeding 
through settlement is a mutual agreement. Yeah. So also the lawyers, usually lawyers are affecting a lot of this. And if the Scientology says if they sign the gag order, then they're going to get 50 million. And if they don't, they're going to get 1 million. And the lawyers right. are like, well, the 50 million, I recommend you, you do that agreement. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Honestly, for most people, I recommend they do that agreement too. Yeah, and we have told <laughs> we've told people that have said, "Well, I won't be able to speak out, but I'm going to get this." And we're like, "Yeah, do that. D be done with all this nonsense. You already told your story. Take the money and run. Whatever. Do what right. you need to do." Monkey House. Hi, Mike. I was pulled into the London church some years ago as I was a semi-successful musician, was led there via ARC Music, music a Cylon Shell company. It was empty. How can the COS afford to rent these huge places out? They don't rent them. They buy them. They collect money from Scientologists, tell them it is the, the most urgent thing on earth for you to turn over every last dollar or pound that you have so that we can buy these buildings, which they call, or David Miscavige calls, ideal orgs, like that one in Queen Victoria Street in London, that are mausoleums uh, that are empty, and um, that's how they afford them. They don't pay the staff anything. So once they bought the building, uh, many of them can't pay their electric bills like the ones in South Africa. Uh, and many of them uh, are behind on their utilities just as a general matter of of day to day operations. But they can keep the building there because they own it. Yeah. yeah. I think that ARC music was a Nicky Hopkins thing because it may have been. Because Claire recorded a, a single on ARC music with Paul McCartney. Yep. Fun story. <laughs> Did a charity song that we recorded at Paul McCartney's windmill that was a had been converted into a music studio when I was twelve. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazing. It was. It was. <laughs> Melissa Rib. <laughs> DM's life is really pretty sad. Cowering at Scientology locations, afraid of everyone, powerful over a few 10,000 people, pitiful human. I would agree with that wholeheartedly. Yes, we have a consensus. <laughs> We're all in agreement. <laughs> Max Troet, if Scientologists see the world and themselves through the lens of their ideology, how did leaving and a radical change in your worldview affect your understanding of identity and subjective reality. Wow. That's a great question. Wow, that's a heavy question. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> it, uh, it changed everything. I, mm -hmm. um, I, I've often described the fact, uh, described that the difficulty when leaving Scientology is knowing whether the way that you identify or your reality about things, whether that is still filtered through the Scientology mindset or inculcation. Um, and I'm not sure how, how, whether you can ever be entirely rid of that, which has been so heavily indoctrinated into you from growing up that I'm talking for us that like us three that grew up in Scientology. Yeah. yeah. Um, we try, I certainly try to, to not view the world through that lens, but you know, sometimes I'm not sure whether, whether I'm seeing it straight or whether I'm seeing it through the perversion that I learned from when I was in Scientology. Yeah. But, yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Go yeah. Ahead, I always Claire. like it. I would liken it to it's like peeling away the the you know layers of an onion, um, but the biggest thing is I would always question myself, and I still do. Am I thinking about this because of how I was raised? And I tried very hard to make sure that I don't. Yeah, I was um, just going to say process. you have to second you have to second guess yourself a little bit and think. Um, uh, what I do is I say. 
let me look at this from the the person or the other group's perspective instead of us versus them how could i see this through the other person's eyes because in scientology you don't do that you that you right. do the exact opposite you just ignore the yep. the other people so if you just try to take it from someone else's viewpoint then you can sort of uh short circuit the scientology version right yep irene hoffman if we could get you kids to post a schedule you would have 10x the number of watching each time. <laughs> no, we wouldn't. Thanks, it's all the same people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. There's a I lot know. of people it's, here for the first time. It's too yeah. hard to... We, if you've got... Mike's got boys. We've got boys. Aaron's got girl. There's too many things happening to be able to stick to an exact rigid schedule because there's a lot of... Uh, uh, Variables. Yeah. The only yes. constant thing in our life is change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good one honey okay okay the midnight show hi from brighton england oh, i love brighton love watching my favorite sptv i called my escape plan from cos my katie holmes project nice that's, that's very cool go down to the pier and play some games for me mm. yeah Jamie Dodger. Hey, folks, thanks for coming on at this time. It's 7.20 p.m. here in England, and I often miss the live streams because of the time difference. Mike, support Tottenham. You know it makes sense. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. love them some football but, clubs over there. I know. I, I have made the mistake of uh, <laughs> announcing my allegiances. Oh, uh, so, is Claire. Been... so is Claire. <laughs> hey, yeah. No matter which way, if you're from Manchester and you announce it, Half the people of Manchester ain't going to be your friend after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I have in my book that I became a Chelsea fan oh, from my. when I lived in East, <laughs> well, near East Grinstead. And I yeah. had a friend at school who was a huge Chelsea fan. And we would take the train up to London and go to Stamford Bridge to watch Chelsea. So I sort of stuck with them. And they've yeah. been good. They've been bad. They're, right now, they're really bad. So <laughs> that guy was emailing me about something earlier. He said, oh, geez, you, like you should be. I uh, taught them with playing Chelsea, and they kicked their asses. <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. Carolus Magnus, thank you for a yellow dot. Okay, hold on. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh come on, Claire. Claire. I'm Claire. sorry. I'm sorry. Jeez. Don't bite my head off. Valerie Boljack. Who was Ruth Eckert? Okay, Ruth Eckert is... Uh, it's Eckerd. Eckerd, E-C-K-E-R-D. A uh, very famous family in Pinellas County. One of the founding sort of, uh, you know, old establishment families of Pinellas County, which is where Clearwater and St. Pete, etc. It's a drug. It's a drugstore train. They have a, a, a drugstores, Eckerd's. Right. Catherine S., when I was out of Aug o -O -O at Flag in 0506, I guess that's an outer Aug trainee. Outer Aug trainee, I think she might might. Yeah. Be. I hated the big events, had to dress up, black tie, and then had reg quotas without knowing anyone and near no public there. Yeah. Oh, Those outer so Aug students, worst. they get the worst. They are... They might possibly be treated worse than Sea Org members for the most part because they're sort of in a limbo land and they're at the mercy of the Sea Org members. Right, right. <sighs> Me, time, DIY with Erica Claire. Where is your plaid shirt? Oh, yeah. I do Look not at that. have any plaid shirts. <laughs> I know. Before you arrived, we, Mark and I were, and I said, oh, Mark, you got a plaid shirt on today. So do I. I didn't want to wear a black shirt or a dark blue shirt. I wanted to wear something <laughs> different because we get, we get razzed. Yeah, That's I just wear I just wear whatever I'm wearing. <laughs> if I show up in a T-shirt, it's a T-shirt. But I, I wear plaid. Okay. Johan Amanu. Please talk about Scientology in Sweden and Swedes in Scientology. Okay, Scientology has been in Sweden for quite a long time. Um, there were there used to be four Scientology organizations in Sweden. Now there's three: Malmö, Malmö, Malmö Gothenburg, Göteborg, and Stockholm. Yes. Okay, and there was another one, and I can't even remember what the name of it was. A long, long time ago. Um, but Scientology has never been particularly popular in Sweden. Um, 
the the Malmo org is the only one that is con is considered to be ideal. They built it in some industrial or they set it up in some industrial park and it's just like an empty shell. Like in a um, warehouse district. Right. <laughs> and there, are, there aren't any really well-known Swedes who have emerged from the Scientology world other than Mariette Lindstein. Yep. Yeah, Mariette who's... Lindstein now is a famous ex-Scientologist who has written several best-selling novels based on her experiences in the Sea Org, working with Claire and me and Mark. Is Claire it particularly yep. in religious I think one technology. of her famous ones is called The Cult in the Fog or The... The Cult on Fog Island. The Cult on Fog Island, yes. Great book. It's a yes. great book. It's yes, so good. It's amazing. I yeah. think... I think that every Scientologist should write a book about their Scientology experience. I wholly believe that they're going to sell books. <laughs> right. Carolus Magnus. If David Miscavige were to somehow stop being the leader of Scientology, if he passed or something of the sort, who would take over? Would it be Tom Cruise? No. No. Wouldn't be Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise isn't going to leave his cushy life as a movie star to go fiddle around with with. Scientology. No, no. I, I mean, I answered this the other day and I said it would be Shelly Miscavige. She would be the best, yeah. Jamie Dodger. Claire, tell us about the bus station incident when you escaped Scientology. Well, the short version is um, <laughs> I was on the Greyhound bus. She was trying to come to where I was. To Mark, and I was intercepted in Las Vegas. They followed me across state lines. Greg Wilhair was there, Sharon Johnston, and at least two other people. And um, so I sat on my purse in the middle of the bus station and decided that if they tried to manhandle me out of there, I would just scream. And this is all in Mark's book, Blown for Good Behind the Iron Curtain of Psychology. <coughs> but I'll add more detail when I get to my version, my, my end of my story. So there you go. Thanks for asking. Perfect. Good answer, Claire. Thank nice. you. All right. So let's go along here. There we go. 51 questions left. Okay. I'll no pick way. Up, pick yep. up my, piece, my pace. Jackson, I'll never forget when backstage with Apple Box Boy at the Shrine, he was upset with the a-holes who didn't attend and fill the goddamn seats. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. I had that many, many, <laughs> that, many, that, many that balcony of the shrine was uh, uh, subject of many a conversation. Gary oh, Meek. Yeah. Mike, one of the funniest things I've ever seen is you and John Atek reviewing History of Man. So bizarre. Love all you guys. Great work. Thank you. Yep. Scott Davidson, have any ex-Scientologists seen see be naked? If so, do oh. tell. No, oh, thank God, you. No, no, no never did it. Never will. <laughs> never <laughs> wanted to. No. Oh, oh, Susie Q. Hello from California. Mike, how many people graduates to OTA yearly, if any? Note, I'm a newbie and I love you all. Nice. Okay, I would say that it is less than 20. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say it's in the tens if they do. Yeah. And but, more, and I would argue also that more of them, more OT8s and OT7s pass away each or year or leave than achieve that state. So right. they've been trying to get to 10,000 ot sevens and ot eights since the 90s and they've never ever come anywhere near that right yep this celeste is lewis if you could interview any past or present scientologist who would it be wow oh, I, I would like to interview elizabeth moss really yeah i really would because particularly because it's just so hypocritical that she plays the role she plays in Handmaid's Tale. And, you know, you just go, she, she, I don't know. There's a lot to unpack there. I'd be very interested to hear her childhood stories since she was born into Scientology and her perspective on it and get her out. There you go. I right. want to interview Pat Broker. I oh, want to yeah, know. That's, that's a good, good one. one. Yes. I'd be like, Great tell one. me, tell me what happened, dude. <laughs> I'd like yeah. to interview Sarah. Oh, wow. Okay. Sarah? Sarah Hubbard. 
L. Ron oh, Hubbard's his never wife. second wife. His not yes. second wife. <laughs> the one who was there during the the <coughs> formative years of Dianetics and Scientology. Yeah, great nice. question. That was a great question. Yeah. Abram of 38. Hello all. What would happen to DM when Scientology collapses? Would he face jail time like Rhaenyra did? Um, hopefully. Uh, hopefully, but unlikely. He's more careful, and there is uh, about that sort of thing. There is civil liability, probably, uh, but I'm not sure about criminal liability. Perhaps there is. I don't know. I'm gonna. Do, I'm actually gonna do a a YouTube show. Hopefully, I'll put it out on Monday about uh, an astonishing document about the prosecution of Scientology. So there we go. Awesome. A teaser. Yeah, there you go. Good one. Arguably AFL Cyan. Hello from sunny Barossa Valley, South Australia. Thank you all for everything you do. Okay. Mm. Barossa Valley in South Australia, near Adelaide, just north of Adelaide, is the great wine growing district of Australia. Nice. Just so you guys know. Isn't it about 6 a.m. there or 7 a.m. there? Yeah, it's early. It's early mm. in the morning. Thank you. Normand. Are you aware of a French book titled A Billion Years? The author says mm. he worked for D and S. Miscavige at Gold Base and Escape when he turned 18 in 1984. Mm. No, not aware of that. No, wow. I had no idea. No clue. Well, you you got you to gotta Google a bil billion years in French in order to find it, I guess. Yeah. Mike E., while the Seahawks elite were playing musical chairs in the hole, who was doing all the work 18 hours slash day worth? Uh, nobody. Nobody was doing any work. It's all there, make work the anyway. The problem is this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's all just made up work anyway. It accomplishes absolutely nothing. If nobody shows <laughs> up for work, nothing changes in Scientology. That's exactly right. It, no, I would argue if no one at the int base did anything, more work would get done in Scientology organizations because they wouldn't have to be reading and responding to nonsense from international That's exactly management. right. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. Yeah. Okay, Jim Lewis, super sticker. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Jim. 40 Deviant questions. Outcast, quite typical for psychopaths. They don't really have a regular sex drive. No desire that's not driven by the need to exert control, gain power, and manipulate. And Mini Misk has other means for that. Yeah. yeah, I I agree with that. Thank you. Yeah. Calico 26. Claire, can you talk in your native accent? No, this is her native accent. I can't. <laughs> she can't. She can't always, even put on an accent. I always <laughs> wanted an American accent, so I got one. And <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, okay, Mark Fisher. Mike, wasn't the plan for an EDN Execstron and WDC to oversee and run Scientology? Wasn't that the plan? DM overrode it, but wasn't that Hubbard's plan? Mark, you're exactly right. That is, that is. And for those who don't know, this is internal, you know, organizational structures of Scientology and how the hierarchy was supposed to operate. As you know, Mark, there was also another part of that, which was the triumvirate of RTC, CST, and CSI, Church of Scientology International, Church of Spiritual Technology, and Religious Technology Center, each of whom had a different role and the ability to, to monitor and ensure that the other two didn't go completely off the rails. And I don't even want to go into the big description of how that was set up or the EDN, et cetera. But Miscavige perverted it all. And you're right. Yeah. Yep. Laurie plays. You three, along with Aaron and Leah, are legit modern day heroes. And I have nothing but love and respect for each of you. Heart, Muddy is a Bleep. fill in the blank. Yeah, there you go. Thank Agreed. you, Laurie. Thank you. Do a little crack a lick of the second. Kyle from California, just got my mini mic in the mail. We will be visiting San Fran and San Jose Org, loving SPTV. Okay, nice. good. Don't forget awesome. Stevens Creek, too. <laughs> and Los Gatos. 
and Los oh, Gatos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And send okay. us pics if you can. <laughs> Eugene Butler, between life implant stations are a very strange idea. You know, say. <laughs> are most members introduced to it? If so, how early? How do they take it? Are there any standard ways to talk about the alien stuff? No, there aren't. And it's forbidden to talk about it, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Although, you know, this this stuff is contained in Hubbard's book. That that was the the reference back to the history of man. That I was that is one crazy yeah. book. Yeah. And how do Scientologists take it? Like everything else in Scientology, because L. Ron Hubbard said it, it's gotta be true. And if it seems crazy to them, they they go through this this cognitive dissonance dissonance drill of yeah, it's probably that I haven't yet attained enough awareness to be able to fully understand this, but I'll get there sooner or later. I'll just have to keep working on my way up the bridge, and then I'll get it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. KDD, watching from Ireland. Yay. There you go. The first time I heard about Scientology was when Katie and TC were expecting a baby. There were stories in the tabloids about Katie being impregnated with the sperm of LRH. Any idea where this rumor originated from? The tabloids. Yeah, the National <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. so not a thing. <laughs> okay. LM, my 70-year-old neighbor broke down when she heard I was watching you. 50 years ago, she was at a Scientology thing here in Stockholm, married three times, moved X number of times, and they sent her letters until a couple of years ago. Wow. I know. Scientology has spent literally millions of dollars hiring skip traces to track people who once had some engagement or involvement in Scientology and then went off and didn't provide any forwarding address. Yeah. They have spent huge amounts of money to track all those people down because, as L. Ron Hubbard says, the size, not the quality, of an org's mailing list is what determines gross income. Yes. So my, my favorite story ever was um, a few years after we left, they called us to try to get us to go in to do renovations. For, yes. What was it? Inglewood or it was like Har Yeah. Inglewood or some org we got they, yeah. like they said, Hey, we'd love for you to come in and volunteer. I was like, Oh, I'm so doing this. You invited me. This is, I mean, when you deal with Scientology and your SP, the vampire code uh, is valid. Like, if you invite me in, I can come in. Okay. So. I, and I almost felt sorry for this person that they got through to Mark because Mark yeah. first got all this information about from about the programs that they use to do that and track people down. Because he, he was like, "How did you get this number? Well, yeah. Tell me about the software you're using." And they yeah. just spilled the beans and they then, told and me then everything. Was like, uh, we're declared SP, so yeah, we're not coming into Inglewood Org to renovate it for you. But there you go. It's okay. so fun. Oh, I see that we were up above 2,000 viewers there. Yeah, and we got yes. about 32 questions left. I know. Tyler C., what's the deal with Mark Yeager? I see this guy show up and giving major speeches in the 80s, then hear stories about his being David Miscavige's punching bag. Did this guy have a future at one point? <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. He was yeah. he, he never a failure. Really those those two pieces of information are not mutually exclusive in Scientology. You don't have to be a punching bag or a public speaker. You're absolutely capable of being both. Yeah. And that you're absolutely capable of not having a future. Yeah. <laughs> My Chemical 74, is there Wi-Fi on target too? <laughs> OC equals freedom. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, Pamela Blackshell. Thank you, Pamela. Mandy Bishop, I'm in South Georgia, so there is zero Scientology here, but me and my husband were in Atlanta last week, and I looked up, and there was the gigantic Scientology building. Yeah, it is gigantic. It's also gigantically empty, and people keep sending me videos. There's a couple of people that are in the Atlanta area that go down and drive around the empty parking lot of that building and take videos. And nice. they just send me the videos. So that's awesome. Nothing happened in there. Jane VC. Hi from a German SP by default expat <laughs> from MCR UK. There oh, you look go. at that. Hi, Jane. Hi, Jane. Go man. Mandy you. Bishop. Go man city. 
I got so excited, my husband thought I was crazy, took a peek in the parking lot, maybe 10 cars that I chalked up to start. Mm. Yeah, there you go. That's just what I said. Yeah. Yep. Marilyn, are there any orgs in all of New England besides the Boston org? No. Fortunately, not. Nothing in Vermont, nothing in New Hampshire, nothing in Maine. No. Dog Walker. Thank you, Dog Walker. Keep walking that dog. Free Shelly Miscavige. Mike, when you finally blew, how did you afford to get home? Okay. My parents had given me a family Amex card many, many years previously, and I had never used it. It was for but it was current? emergencies. And you, they you kept, kept it, it current? They kept it current. Wow. That emergencies. whole time? The wow. whole time. Wow. So you I had mean, an escape hatch. They just renewed their $55 a year or whatever it is for an Amex yeah. card. But you had an I escape had hatch that whole time. Exactly. Wow. That's awesome. I never knew that, Mike. I wondered that when I saw that question. I was like, yeah, that's a good question. How did Mike get out of UK back to the States with nothing? I figured, I figured that by the time it showed up on the Amex card that I had never used, they wouldn't even know that that existed. Yeah. So they'd never be able to track. Anyway. Wow. I, I talk about it in the book. Nice. Greg Horde, hi all. Would you do a live slash book tour? Reading UK. <laughs> I, I mean, I would happily do is. that. I would have, <laughs> yeah, but, but we now can reach a hell of a lot more people on YouTube than we can traveling around from place to place. And it's yeah. much easier and just as much fun. We're also kind of unfil <laughs> we're unfiltered 95% here. <laughs> yep. We get, as soon as we start getting on TV or podcasts or something like that, then uh, the powers that be can kind of control what we can and cannot say. So right. this is a little bit more up uh, uh, in our uh, where we want to be right. for that reason. Jacob Hockey, I've heard that Heba Gench has been moved from gold to a nursing home. Do you know details? If so, have you considered trying to visit him? Um, I have heard the same thing from very reliable sources. And yes, there have been attempts to find him. I am not sure that he isn't under an assumed name. I would assume that he probably is. I know that there are some people who have gone looking for him and have not yet been able to track him down. Yes, we've heard similar things. Yeah. F.A. Shopes. I've been watching this in the background, not realizing it's live. I've been binging SCTV <laughs> like nuts. Love you all. Thank Thanks. you. Nolene, Dub Ireland Org has moved to the Outback. Hello, <laughs> oh, I love that. Yep. Well, it was always oh, there was no org there before they built that thing out in the sticks. There was no org. They just decided. Miscavige decided we're building an ideal org in Dublin. Yeah, Claire's know. mom was part of that. Yep. Katie. Parked in front of Buffalo Org while leaving flowers for a firefighter killed on duty down the street this week. Hmm. The model for ideal orgs has doors locked, no one around, and looked abandoned midday. Yay. Yep. That is the world of Scientology ideal orgs. Yep. Yeah. Richard Farley. Hi, Mike. Mike, Nike, and Claire. It's, it's good. Nike, Mark, Billy Bob, whatever. <laughs> it's all by good. all those names. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know if you got last one on Manchester Org, Old Derelict. Check out Manchester Evening News. Love you all. Mm. Thank wow. you. Wow. Okay, interesting. Check it out. Kim White, why is the COS in Washington, D.C. called Founding COS? Was it the first in the U.S.? Great work, guys. No, it was just Hubbard decided to call it the Founding Church of Scientology, uh, for PR reasons, but it, it was one of the the earlier ones, kind of thing. Yeah, well, it really started in Phoenix, and then he moved and went to DC. Uh, there was a couple of other uh, places in between, but wasn't yeah. the first one in Bayhead, New Jersey? That was Dianetics. Oh, Di mm. but that was pre Scientology. Mm -hmm. Jane VC, cults and their dangers, et cetera, is part of the German curriculum in school. Something similar in the U.S.? No, there is not, and there absolutely needs to be. Agreed. This is education about cults is absolutely a necessity, and 
eventually we will get there. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Gary Jackson Moorhead. One of my Captain Bill memories was when he arrived to the complex on his bike wearing turquoise speedos, hustless <laughs> oh chaps, shirtless with a leather jacket, and Daphna riding with him in similar gear. Is wow. this for real? Jackson, is that for real? That is sure amazing. Is. I'm sure it is. <laughs> From the stories I've heard about this dude, I could absolutely see him I, pulling I that off. Too. That's amazing. Uh, I would Clara. have loved to see pictures of that. Holy crap. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No, yeah, maybe he not. He was not the most attractive guy. Okay. <laughs> Neither was she. Mm. Horror well, business. Eyeballs burned. In, that, in the chat had a question but couldn't find Super Chat. Do you know anything about a Frank Oliver from Osa, Miami, who spoke out in 96, 98? Yes. Yeah. He's like, he's all over the place. And yeah. his, his documents are all over the place. The Osa intelligence hat comes from him he took that and put it on the internet yeah he's 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 around. legit he was and that's there clara clara by the way thanks for joining us clara and thanks for helping that person with their question appreciate it okay Jeannie levesque bonjour from quebec city bonjour, bonjour. <laughs> deviant outcast mark i saw a female filmmaker made a trailer to bfg the movie it was rad elaborate yes. Please. Elaborate, please. Elaborate, please. Well, the um, it was actually a girl that we knew in Los Angeles, uh, Carla Zamudio. Oh, yeah. And, and she was, um, I think the girl's name is Rachel. I can't remember her last name. At Rachel this Meyer, Hastings. I think. Oh, oh. no, no, Ra Rachel yeah. Meyer. Yeah, Rachel oh, Meyer. Yeah. Okay. And um, she and Carla, they put together this uh, like sort of uh, short film of the Blown for Good book. And um, we'll put a link out, Claire, if you could send a link to Mike and then we could put it in. It's on YouTube and yep. uh, it's amazing. It's a really great thing. And my, my, um, oh, I get a little emotional. My, my dad who just recently passed away, um, he really liked stuff like that. And he was a super big fan of that. And um, anyway, uh, yeah, it's cool. Uh, yep. we we weren't really involved in it because we live here in Colorado and they produced it in Los Angeles but it's amazing it's great we loved it and, they, um, and they I had think, our blessing to yeah to, to use your book for that 100 yeah. percent yeah yeah okay there's two um, other parts to this love your book one problem I can finish it because then it's over <laughs> <laughs> nice Claire you're, you're a lioness thank you love you, you. yes love you thank you Devin outcast yep Sandy Yerkins Powers. Thank you, Sandy. Jane VC. Hi. SP by default expat from MCI UK. Love you read to that all. one. Hi. Oh. Ryan, do you have any insights on Nakanon? I know that's vague. Just curious on anything you dealt with or know about it. I went twice in early 2000s. Got to meet Tom and Katie at graduation once. Hmm. Um, yeah, there's a lot to know about Nakanon and a lot. I mean, Nakanon has had an enormous amount of problems because they have had some very, very poor results, like poor results, meaning people dying on the program yeah. and getting sued and being investigated by health agencies and licensing agencies. And Nakanon has become a, a sort of exclusive very limited activity. They opened up a celebrity knocking on and it's, it's like it's, a boutique rehab now instead right. of a mass, you know, right. Like knocking on arrowhead, you could get like two, 300 recovering addicts in there. And these places they have now are like eight beds. So, yep. Yep. Lane Berlin, as much as DM isolates themselves, do you think he and Tom Cruise still hang out regularly? I don't know. I, you know, if Tom Cruise is in Clearwater, maybe, but I don't think that Tom Cruise is spending much time in Clearwater. Like, I am pretty sure that if Tom Cruise flew in on his Gulfstream, that someone at the whatever airport he landed at would leak that information. I am pretty sure that in this environment, if he showed up here, He's probably someone's probably going to know he's here and that word is going to get out. I haven't seen anything like that. So 
I don't yep. think so. Dave Dave Wheelhauer. Why don't we create an SP bridge, a nice certificate? I bet you could sell a lot. I'm 100% a sold out SP. I think about DM dropping his body. So somebody sent me a Word document and I'm very um, I'm very possibly going to put it on the new uh, SP store or BFG website, which is it's a it's a word document you can just download and edit the name but it's a full uh suppressive person declare so we might just have that as a download you can just download it and print it off and frame it and now you're an sp there yep you go okay we're down to five okay pj lebaron super sticker thanks pj the pet wellness coach how where do i send something for claire well actually for her dogs i miss seeing them this q a uh, she's over Bella's there. not there. No, she's, she's there. She's there. She's she sleeping can't. in her bed. Claire uh, doesn't go anywhere without that dog following her. If she, if Claire goes in her office and closes the door, the dog will just scratch on the door until she opens the door. <laughs> I know. I feel like Snow White sometimes. The animals just flood <laughs> around me. I'm like, yeah, oh boy. They really do. So <laughs> what's the, cats the answer, do. Claire? Um, there's an address on the aftermathfoundation.org that will come to me. Okay, there, there you go. go. Good. Yeah. Good. Okay. There you go. Anthony Spurgeon, how did no one die on the Apollo? Seems miraculous. Oh, people died on the Apollo. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure they did. I mean, there was a there was a famous incident or infamous incident. Now her name escapes me, who shot herself on the Apollo. Oh boy. So, yeah, yeah. There, there were there, but I I do understand that there were people that injured themselves and you know as is so typical of the sea organization you know everything is like you don't do safety precautions there's no safety equipment there's like wing it wing, like it wing it productions <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah wendy and fisher super sticker thank you wendy there we go oh my God, that was everything we had marked end. We did yes. it. Oh, that's wonderful. We did that's it. That's wonderful. Oh, we did it. Uh, we really, we, really we did it. Do... Okay. What? Yeah. All right. What, Claire? Well, we have a few Speak others Claire. that that missed the cutoff, so I don't know if you oh. want me to mark those. Well, or just not. get them. We got like ten minutes, and we're okay, done. Okay. So you guys just talk while I. Okay. Up. While you find yeah. them, Mike. Yeah. I was going to say at the imp base in the estates, people fell out of the roof and shattered their their legs and their legs. ankles chopped off fingers and the table saws on a regular basis people at bridge chopped their fingers off cutting books and printed materials the sea org is not uh if if osha could walk into sea org facilities they would be lit up full time because not only people aren't sleeping People right. are not wearing hard hats and safety <laughs> harnesses and lockouts on electrical. It's it is sort of a wild wild west in terms of safety. <laughs> oh, well, of course, as Ron says, you've run planets before. You yeah, should be able to, you should be able to run a table saw. Yeah, there goes your middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> I would, oh also, goodness. I would tend to argue that running a planet might be different than a table saw. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't get logical. This is the wrong time to get logical. Planet's not going to chop your finger off, okay? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, okay. Depends on what the planet is, I guess. <laughs> it's got a lot of those rings floating around it, maybe, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah. How's it going over there, Claire? I'm working on it. You can start putting up stuff. The, uh, the there you go. Mark Just go back the... over to the stars. I'm, real quick. I'm going back. Okay. <laughs> She's, She's ordering me around now. <laughs> Rose K, 7.30 a.m. Australia, Eastern Daylight Time. I want a T-shirt that says SPTV Dirty Cracker Liquors. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we should do it. This Dirty Cracker Liquor thing dirty is really starting to take is... off. Yeah, it really is. If it's I very... ever get a bobblehead, he's going to be after licking crackers. <laughs> that, that's actually the perfect thing. Remember that we there was all that discussion about what people were going to call themselves that followed. Yeah, the, the dirty episode. cracker liquor. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Bernstein, super sticker. Thank you, Ken. Okay, Jay Dice. If COS falls, will Aftermath still do anti cult work? Hmm. Huh. We might still probably. There. There might Probably, still be people actually. to help in the Scientologists. They're still going to need to like 
get their lives together, even if there's no more Scientology. Yep. Zena Reno. Do any of you have memories of Jim Fitzgerald, one of the executive directors of the Ideologue in San Francisco or his family? Nope. Never heard of him. Never heard of him. Never met him. Sorry. Raphael, I made a draft SPTV logo. Where should I send it? Send it to the email in the Blown for Good About page. You can get it on a computer and uh, go to Blown for Good About. And then it says for business use. And you click on that and it reveals the email you can send it to. LK Niche, super sticker. Thank you. Astrid Botcher. Hey, Mike, did you manage to reach OT7 while in the ESO because you were rushed up the bridge for your job at OSA? Was there any solar auditing being done in the hole? <laughs> Keep up the great work. Uh, I sort of was rushed up the bridge from when I was the commanding officer of the Commodore's messenger org in Clearwater. And I got to OT5 then. That was when uh, newer dynamics for OT's knots came out. And I was a priority to to get onto knots. So, yeah. And also, he was at the one place that had the most amount of auditors that could audit people. So, which is an anomaly at every other Sea Org. There's not a lot of people that are auditing the staff. Yeah, and there was an auditor in CMOCW. Actually, David Miscavige's ex brother-in-law, Sam Lachadi who had to get trained as a class nine to audit knots. And I was his pre OT. Pre wow. Ah, here we go. El King. Wow. I know mine will not get read, but I don't care. I wanted to support your channel. You are all so brave and have been through so much and still are going through so much. Thank you for shining a huge light on the true Scientology world. Nice. Thank you so much. Those sort of comments just like melt me. They yeah. they really they really have a big impact on. I don't know. Just me too. They have I, a big impact. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah, to me, keep going. Me too. I'm I'm always motivated by people that just come here because they never had anything to do with Scientology, but you know they're here listening and learning, and that has always motivated me to continue speaking our truth and exposing. So. Yep. Okay, Thomas, does anyone know what became of Alexander Riedel, press spokesman for Scientology in Germany back in the late 80s? He even was in talk show in Germany. No, I don't. Sorry. That was no, before no my clue. time. Okay. I'm all Juli caught up, by the way. Just so okay, you great. Know, so. so we've got seven to go. Yep. Juliana Bittencourt, late to the SP party, sending much love from BR. Brazil. Thank you. Thanks, Juliana. That's we Brazil. You being here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look at the little flag. Yeah. Oh, cool. She and, and she is me. often on the chats and in these videos. I've seen her name many, many times before. Okay, yes. terrific. Jane Brown, love you guys together on lives. It seems like David Miscavige might be an incel. <laughs> he <got laughs> love eleven. He oh denies everyone goodness. else those pleasures. Even when he's married. That might okay. be a little closer to home than most people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, hmm. Let's see. Uh, got a match. Why does Scientology purchase historic buildings? So many rules around historic sites. Wouldn't they be the most expensive to maintain? I walk past Castle Ray Street, Sydney, and always wonder. Jess, Sydney, Australia. Okay. They don't actually set out to purchase historic buildings. Um, but because of what you say, that often makes those buildings cheaper uh, yeah. because nobody else wants to go through the hassle. For Scientology, it doesn't matter. They have free labor. and But the Castle Ray Street building for Scientology, which is where the Sydney Org has been forever, in fact, I don't know that it was ever anywhere else, is sort of a grandfathered-in location. Also, I heard... When they do have historic buildings, it's harder for like eminent domain and other things to take place because it's the building is sort of off limits to nonsense because it's historical and Scientology kind of uses that in their favor. Yep. Show ups. 
Did Mark do SFX on the Curse of King Tut's Tomb? I did. The Curse of King Tut's Tomb, The Poseidon Adventure, Blackbeard, and a whole bunch of other Hallmark TV shows like Mystery Woman number 43 and um, a bunch of other TV so, shows. On, it wasn't uh, Supernova another one? Oh, yeah, Supernova. Yeah. Yes. That good thinking. Okay. Uh, Betsy it's Simon. on my IMDb page if you want to check that out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when did you each blow? 2007, June. January 2005. End of January 2005. There you go. Yeah, Claire, I mean, she couldn't come with me. The bike, I had my luggage on the back. So I was like, you got to bust just, you out in a few weeks. Don't justify it, honey. Don't justify it. Justify it. You're here with me right now. What's to justify? <laughs> the Scientology geek. How is everyone doing today? Good. Just peachy. Yes. Lovely. Good. With all these lovely comments, it always makes a happy day. Yeah, Honestly, it really does. Sebastian Elder, I now call my dog a dirty cracker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my you goodness. dirty cracker licker, you. Okay, here's the last. Deva Stevio. Oh, Steve what right. is this Scientology you speak of? I'm here to drink, <laughs> laugh, and destroy injustice. Just wanted to say hi on a windy Saturday afternoon. Love you all. Thank you so much. Love you. Thank, Thank you, Denver Thank Steve. Thank you, Denver Steve. -o. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, we just got it here. in right on time. Yes. Yep. For being oh. here. Oh, look at this. I look at this. Headley's. I made something here. Look at this. Visit my blog. Look Yay. at this. I'm, it, I'm advancing. And yes. personalized copies of a billion years that can be ordered on my blog. Nice. <laughs> Perfect. Good job, Mike. Yeah, I'm. I'm like really slick at this stuff. Yeah, now. high tech grandma. <laughs> We're gonna over start here. calling you techno, Mike. We're gonna start calling you <laughs> gramophone, Mike, over here. <laughs> oh. Okay, guys, thank you so much for helping me with this today, and thank you to everybody that joined. There was like more than two thousand people here, and there still is right now. I know. Yeah. It's it amazing. is awesome. it is amazing and your support means the world to us it really, really does. does it is so nice to know how many people there are all over the world who are operating on the same page as we are which is to do something and contribute in any way they can to ending the abuses of scientology yes. so until next time Thanks and bye. 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 See you next time from the SPTV network. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>